This is a Channel 2 special presentation. Good morning. This is KNXT in Los Angeles, California, transmitting on Channel 2 by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. It's just after dawn, and our regular broadcast day is beginning here at KNXT. Ah, but this is no ordinary day. As of Monday, April 2nd, 1984, KNXT will never be the same. Something special is going to happen, but more about that a little later. First, let's take a look back at the highlights of KNXT, historical highlights. We'll call it then to now. We were the first and only television station on the West Coast for nearly a decade. In those days, the station was known as W6XAO, Channel 1, and it was the dream of auto dealer turned broadcast pioneer Don Lee, along with a young engineering student from the University of California, Harry Lubke. After building their own TV equipment from scratch, they succeeded in transmitting a picture from one end of a room to another. Then they broadcast down the street. After that, nothing could hold them back. And on December 23, 1931, Channel One began sending pictures through the air on a regular basis. There was much to celebrate because the miracle of television was beginning. Incidentally, in those days, you know, you couldn't just go out and buy a TV set. You had to build it. It was do-it-yourself television. To reach a larger area, Don Lee moved his antenna to the top of a mountain next to Griffith Park, officially known as Mount Kawenga, but he preferred calling it Mount Lee. Mr. Lee built a modern TV station there in 1939 with all the latest equipment, including a swimming pool. When the war came along, television was temporarily put on hold, and W6XAO was only used for civil defense bulletins and promotion of war bonds. After the war, TV came of age. In 1946, there were only 400 sets in this area, but four years later, over 300,000 were counted. It was during this tremendous growth in television that Channel One went through its first major change. Mr. Lee physically moved it from its mountaintop to 1313 Vine Street, and not only changed its placement on the dial from Channel One to Channel Two, but also changed its call letters from W6XAO to KTSL. It wasn't long before the new KTSL caught the eye of CBS and Don Lee sold his station to the network after meeting with CBS President William Paley. Under Paley's guidance, the station went through more changes. Its call letters were switched to KNXT, and its transmitter was moved to a higher mountaintop, Mount Wilson, increasing its signal by tenfold. And after all this, there was still one major move in store for KNXT. For decades, this building was the flagship for the CBS radio network on the West Coast. But then during the TV explosion of the 60s, when the emphasis began to move from radio toward television, KNXT also moved to Columbia Square. And this is Studio 22, where a lot of great live radio classics were broadcast with such hosts as uh, Jimmy Durante, Jack Benny, Gene Autry, Bing Crosby. The Amos and Andy radio show originated from here. So did Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Now it's used by KNXT's many local productions, such as our early morning show, Two With You. But in the beginning, you know, the idea of presenting a whole program over the air was brand new. Pathé News Service used to send over some old newsreels. Usually they were weeks out of date. And a deal was made with Paramount Pictures, old film clips, any old pieces of film left around on the floor after the editor finished the movie. It's funny, but years later, in 1933, the first feature full-length motion picture on television was broadcast over this station. It was called The Crooked Circle. As television grew, so did the station's list of programs. Among them was the very first television soap opera, Vine Street, in 1938. Queen for a Day was produced by Channel 2, 
as were a number of live variety shows with masters of ceremony like Maury Amsterdam. That's my racket dancing. You know, I was with a dance trio at one time. You were? Yes, I was. Tell us about it. I will, and he did. It was Amsterdam's show which presented a new comedian to the viewing audience, Art Carney. It's a tender little love song, the title, I have a girl five feet six with a face exactly like William Ben Dick. <laughs> How many songs you like better than that there? All of them. <laughs> there's a part of me in this one. I mean, there's a part of you me. You really put, a, a, put a party in this song, yes. Yeah. We didn't find the needle in the haystack, darling, but we had fun just the same. <laughs> KNXT pioneered morning programs with Panorama Pacific. Starring Red Row, this trend-setting program was on the air from 7 to 9 a.m. for 16 years. We came into town here with 30 pieces of luggage. You wouldn't think it'd take that much to look this bad, would you? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, unanimous uh, decision of the judges was Miss Cleopatra. Miss Cleopatra! Cleo, my dear, your real name when you're not posing as Cleopatra is... Sally Mills. Sally Mills. To all of you, dear losers, <laughs> try again next year when we have our 40th town fair for the City of Hope. Larry Finley hosted a unique evening talk show with a comfortable nightclub atmosphere that was, like its title, strictly informal. Well, I think this is a good time to introduce another uh, singer by the name of Alan Jones that I know quite well. Good. This is a 17-year-old boy who has a voice that is not as good as yours, but I have hopes that someday it will be. And this is throwing a curve to our director, but <laughs> stand up, Alan Jones, Jr., ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Professor Julius Sumner Miller hosted a public service show called Why Is It So? It taught simplified science to viewers of all ages. I have here a little electric meter which is connected to nothing save two wires whose ends are twisted together here. Now I'm going to heat these two wires with the flame of a burning match. And an astonishing thing is witnessed. Notice that the scale gives evidence of an electric current. We have converted thermal energy into electrical. Why is it so? But then if you wanted a more exotic flavor, you could always tune in on Saturday nights at 7.30 and catch Harry Owens and his Royal Hawaiians. Owens had won an Academy Award for writing the song Sweet Leilani for a Bing Crosby movie, so of course, he used it as his theme song. By the late 40s, the television industry began to award excellence in the field of programming, as you'll see right now from this live broadcast of the sixth annual Emmy Awards from the Hollywood Palladium. Joan Blesley, ladies and gentlemen, with the best entertainment program. Frosty Frolics, Jukebox Jury, The Lawrence Welk Show, Scoop the Writers, Spade Cooley Show, and Stairway to Stardom. And here comes the oh, award. I'm delighted to present this. The Academy of Television Arts and Sciences presents its 1953 Hollywood Achievement Award for the best entertainment program to Jukebox Jury. Jukebox Jury is now in session. Get ready Jukebox Jury was on every Saturday night at 10.30. It was a 90-minute barometer of what would be a hit or a miss on the music chart. One by one. We'll vote them a hit. We'll vote them a miss. But now before we start, may we present his musical honor. Judge Peter Potter. Jury, will it be a hit or a miss? And if you wanted a good laugh on Sunday afternoon in 1952, all you had to do was tune in KNXT. The station's booth announcer, a youngster from Nebraska, was the host, and here is a rare kinescope of that program. KNXT, with its eyes wide open, cautiously presents... Carson Seller! Thank you very much, everybody.
thank you very much. The eye was supposed to cry, and at the, <laughs> the last minute, I guess it got myopia or something, but the eye didn't cry tonight. Thank you very much for coming into the cellar tonight. It's a little bit cold tonight. In fact, I think that's why we got one young lady out there. Before the show, I said, why did you come and see the show? And she says, because it was cold outside. But uh, we like to have an honest audience. And tonight, we've got a variety of things on the cellar. Great new quiz game, take it or nothing. And here's your lovable, lovable quiz master, Bert O'Keefe. Hello, 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 quiz fans. How are you out there? Tell us your plan. Yes, sir. Hello there. Yes, sir. We're all ready to play that fabulous new game. Is everybody in the audience ready to play Take It or Nothing? That's the spirit we like to see here on the program. And now we're all ready to go. But before we meet our first contestants on tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about the secret word. If any one of our contestants says the secret word tonight, he or she will win $100 cash. And the secret word tonight is prognostication. <laughs> and now, let's meet our first couple. Would you come right in, please? How about a nice hand? Nice hand. Take it or nothing, aren't we? How do you do, sir? How do you do? You've been selected at random from the studio audience to play our game tonight. Well, I had a kind of a prognostication I might be on your show, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word has been changed to contingency. <laughs> Keep the turkey meat, and now we're ready to stuff the bird. Now, in stuffing a turkey, ladies, you must remember to don't stuff too hard. Just fill the cavity comfortably with the dressing. <laughs> so <laughs> right down into the turkey and move it up front. <laughs> 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 when you hold, hold the turkey, move the dressing right down. In keeping with its heritage as a famous radio and television stage, this Studio 22 most recently made history when President Carter visited here to conduct a special live town meeting in 1977. I'm Connie Chung. And I'm Joseph Benty. President Carter will be here in just a moment talking face to face with the people of Southern California for about an hour on television for the first time. Some of the people are here in our audience. They are a, a representative group selected at random to join us here in the studio. And then many more people are waiting at five remote locations around Southern California also to ask questions of the president. Those live cameras are located in the San Fernando Valley, in South Los Angeles, in East Los Angeles, and on the UCLA campus in Westwood and in Orange County. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. When we return, some more KNXT landmarks in the field of television news, then to now. It's 2.32 now, and things are beginning to pick up here in the newsroom. The news has always been vital to KNXT. We were the first station locally here to do our own investigative reporting, and KNXT was first to assign a reporter specifically to cover the fields of politics and the environment. KNXT News had its beginnings when the station presented film footage of the Long Beach earthquake back in 1933. The first newscast here was the 10 o'clock news with the first on-camera woman reporter in L.A., Ruth Ashton. There was Tom Harmon on sports and Dan Lundberg served as anchor man. Then in 1961, KNXT revolutionized the concept of local television news with the big news. From the world we live in, from the United States of America, from Los Angeles comes the story of today, the big news. Well, there was nothing like it anywhere, an entire hour of news. Good evening, Jerry Dunphy, and tonight's big news in color. 
Along with Jerry Dunphy, there was weatherman Bill Keane and sportscaster Gil Stratton. Also on staff was a hard-nosed investigator named Bill Stout. Then during the 60s, KNXT expanded coverage of local issues by producing Ralph Stories, Los Angeles. <laughs> You know, there are always the timid among us who want to keep things the way they are because any change might be for the worse. Their warning used to be, don't rock the boat. Of course, that's not in anymore. Today, you're supposed to say, don't make waves. Otherwise, you'd be rocking the boat. But along with the timid, there are always agitators among us who prefer to make waves. And one of them is a citizen of our town named Claire Falkenstein. Now, Miss Falkenstein, you see, is an artist. And artists who don't make waves often go completely unremembered. So when Claire Falkenstein was commissioned to create a fountain for the new California Federal Building on Wilshire, just down the street from the new art museum, she deliberately made a very big wave. She made it out of copper and bronze tubing and hunks of colored glass in her backyard near the beach in Venice. But it did not look like the waves on the beach, and when it crested on Wilshire Boulevard, it touched off a wild spray of reaction. One critic called it a superb piece of art. Another saw it only as a mad jungle of copper, bronze, glass, and hissing water. A wave lover was sure it was comparable to the fountains of Rome, but a wave hater was certain it was planned to clash with all the beauty around it. Well, as we all know, it isn't really the critics who pass final judgment on artists and their work. It's the masses for whom art is created. So we In the 70s, electronic news gathering was the latest news, and KNXT was the first to switch from film to videotape. The new technology not only had a new look, it allowed events to be covered live. An advantage best demonstrated one Friday night in 1974. I hear the police yelling now that there was fire from 5-5 in Compton, right where we are now, as well as the other location. I haven't been able to confirm that report as yet. KNXT was the only station on location when the Los Angeles police moved in on the Symbionese Liberation Army looking for Patty Hearst. The deadly confrontation was broadcast live into millions of homes. An enormous amount of, of fire being concentrated on that yellow house. See the, the, the rags waving? All right, that has got to be the target house, Bill, and I think we're just about to move in on it. If you look up here, you can see the uh, police with gas masks, and these men here are carrying gas, ma gas uh, can cartons. But their, fi their fire is primarily through that, through, through between those two. Right, right. Bill, this sergeant has been standing here throughout this thing. Let's see what we can get from him. So I, it's a bad time to talk to you, I know, but just tell me what you have seen here for the time you've been. Uh, you've been. Can you can you indicate to us uh, which side is the uh, the police target? They they aiming to go this way or that direction? Which way is it? They're going this way. Are we in that direction? All right, so that they're concentrating the fire from these two corners onto that white house with the two windows that we can see there? Right, as far as I can determine, and you've got as close as I have. Look out there. That's bad. That's bad. Get back, guys. We just took a uh, we just took a ricochet or a direct yeah, no, on the whip. That was a uh, we just got missed by a bullet. <laughs> oh, I don't. It went through the house right to beside us here. I yeah, can I see can, a hole yeah. in the screen, yeah. I believe. Let's uh, let's see if we couldn't still get this picture, but from a little better location, huh? Now, if you can still see between those two houses, I don't know whether you can or not. No, that. Uh, that is now the target house. Oh, We're getting gassed again. Maybe oh, we better move. We better move back a little bit. <laughs> Stay low, Rich. <laughs> we got a lot of gas. Oh, that gas is incredible. Uh, oh, ouch. There are more police now. This place is getting uh, filling up with police. I'm a, and uh, they're, they're taking weapons. Uh, a police with an automatic weapon has uh, pulled it out. He, he put the magazine in his in his uh, weapon. He's apparently going to put a, a bulletproof vest or a flak jacket or something on. He's reaching into his duffel bag. Other police officers, one, two, three, four. Okay, they're hauling us back. They're hauling us back. They're moving us back. They're moving us back. Okay, easy, easy. Okay, take it.
KNXT continued to be the leader in local television news, being the first to expand its evening news broadcast from a half hour to an hour, and then from an hour to two hours, and then from two to two and a half hours. All moves which were copied nationwide. So, now it's 7.30 and Two on the Town is being broadcast. KNXT's local magazine program started in the fall of 1978 and it's been the most popular in L.A. ever since that first program with Steve Edwards and Connie Chung. Good evening, I'm Connie Chung. And I'm Steve Edwards and together we're Two on the Town. on the town has gone through many changes. The most exciting was when Melody Rogers became co-host in 1980. Throughout the years, Two on the Town has expanded its coverage of life in L.A. to life in the whole world with its popular series of travel specials. Turn the latest historic landmark for KNXT right after this. And now it's 1047 and our broadcast day is beginning to wind down. Well, my broadcast day is beginning to wind down too. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this program, this date, April 2nd, 1984, marks a significant change in the history of Channel 2 KNXT. It all started with W6XAO. Then we became KTSL. CBS changed the call letters to KNXT. But from now on, you will know us as KCBS TV. For 50 years, Channel 2 has been covering Southern California with the best in television news and programming, and I don't need to tell you that all of that could only be the result, as you saw in the retrospective tonight, the result of teamwork. A lot of good people have and still do work inside this building, and what could better exemplify that than our news team? Jess Marlowe, John Schubeck, Sandy Hill, Jim Hill, McLovio Perez, Bill Stout, myself, and many, many others. Now, Channel 2, KCBS-TV, will continue to bring you the first and the best in local and network programming and the first and the best in local television news. We can show you that right now because we can switch inside to our Channel 2 newsroom where Jess Marlowe and Sandy Hill are getting ready with our 11 o'clock edition. A little early tonight because of the basketball game, but let's find out what the latest headlines are. Are you there? You bet, Ralph, and uh, after all these years, we're still doing what perhaps we've done best, an occasional remote from outside, out on Sunset Boulevard. It's good to see you out there. Thank you. Uh, Even at this hour, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> it is past my bedtime, Sandy. Don't joke about that. But uh, listen, what are tonight's headlines? Many things, and as he noted, too, we are a little early this evening. But in the local news tonight, the son of a couple accused of keeping a young woman as a sex slave is in custody in San Dimas tonight. 25-year-old Theodore Glom Jr. has been booked on charges he raped the young woman and that he violated parole. He was originally picked up in Irwindale, where his parents were arrested. But since the rape allegedly happened in San Dimas, sheriff's deputies there took over. Now, they say the victim, a woman who allegedly was starved into prostitution, identified the younger glom from photographs. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Sandy. And we'll be looking forward to the news in just a moment. As I said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I remember walking in that front entrance in 1948 in a gray suit with a Homburg, and they wondered... I wondered how they knew I was from New York. <laughs> 
things change, but they stay the same. And we hope that you will too and stay with Channel 2, which now has the call letters KCBS TV. And for everyone at KCBS TV, Ralph Story here. Thank you and good night. It's about time. Come on. Where can you get chicken that tastes as great as this looks? Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. Right. If you're watching your cholesterol... Discover the great taste of Mocha Mix non-dairy creamer. Fresh and creamy. And no cholesterol. Mocha Mix non-dairy creamer. Great taste. Try it. Who gives you the lowest unrestricted fares? Jet America. To Chicago. Every flight. Every day. Personal touch. Notch Landing, now weekdays at 3. It's said there's no place like home, and there's no place like our home, Columbia Square. This is where my life began. For our special guest Art Linkletter and so many other celebrities when they did radio here, Columbia Square was in her glory. See how many faces you can recognize. <laughs> This was my home, and my real home was just a place I went to sleep. Now, this is the front of the studio. We didn't have walls like this. No, this is no longer open. the front of the studio. Oh, that's right. We used to have them line up yeah. to come in here. I can't even get out or in there. Or sometimes, of course, when there were very bad days, the ushers would have to go out and Shanghai an audience. I doubt People that. couldn't walk by. They were dragged in. Tonight, let us drag you in to some of the secrets of Columbia Square. Okay, Kay, don't be ridiculous. Well, you just met me. Hey, listen, a chow hound doesn't have to wait for dinner to be hungry, you know. <laughs> that gypsy I like, he may sound sad and blue. Where Gene Autry sang his songs is now where Bill Stout speaks his mind. And was where Janis Joplin, Barbara Streisand, the Beach Boys, Simon and Garfunkel, and many more recorded some of the biggest hits of the 60s. Now in the 80s, we do two on the town here, Channel 2 News, KNX News Radio, and KKHRFM, and of course, many more shows. This is the courtyard now, but it used to be where people would line up to see all the shows and to see all the celebrities that have walked through those doors. But tonight, you don't have to wait in line to see our show. I'm Melody Rogers. And I'm Bob Chandler. Welcome to Two on the Town from Columbia Square. In 1937, William Paley bought KNX and came to sunny Southern California to start an office on the West Coast for the Columbia Broadcasting System. The site chosen? Sunset and Gower. The type of architecture? Well, the most modern for the times, of course. The Swedish architect thought the Art Deco look would be perfect for a glamorous new radio studio. What was architectural art to some was the pit to others. 
Back in the 50s, another one of its nicknames, the bomb shelter. Maybe that's because it really was. The basement was designated an atomic shelter, and up until several years ago, this storage room held survival crackers and bottled water. Columbia Square was the first building in Los Angeles to be air conditioned, the same system that keeps us cool today. The building was so far ahead of its time, most of its working parts are still going strong half a century later. We will keep you up to date on all the scores throughout the evening. Harry, that's sports. Thank you, Barry. You'll hear sports on KNX at 15 and 45 past the hour. A summary of the day's top stories when we continue here on the news station KNX. The CBS network has always been proud of its news coverage, and some say this is the fastest newsroom around. It's KNX News Radio, the first computerized broadcast newsroom in Southern California. But not all the achievements KNX has worked for can be put on a wall. In 1984, a pilot welfare fraud unit went into operation. Its purpose Gary Clark had polio at the age of 10. That didn't stop him from heading up KNX's Ventura County Bureau. I made a deal with the news director that if the assignment editors would go ahead and just treat me like any other reporter and not worry about what they were sending me, I'll be fine. If I get an assignment that I in my own mind feel I can't do, I'll tell them. That's the only way I, I need to do that to be fair to the station so they can send somebody who can't. I haven't told them that yet. We doubt he ever will. I don't plan on it. About the only thing that did rattle Gary was the first time he realized just who he was working for. I kept thinking back when I was a little bitty boy, you know, and I listen, I said, I'm in the same building, you know, where, where they were broadcasting this when I was a little teeny tiny kid, and I listened to that radio every night, you know. This telegram from Jack Benny was short, but sweet. Just three words. Congratulations, Jack. What was the third word? Collect. <laughs> 436 cans of pork and beans. 430. Rochester, how come we got so many cans of pork and beans? Don't you remember? Mr. Paley threw those in to clinch the deal. <laughs> and the stand up contract of Flukey. Flukey, get this in your head now. Yeah, I was listening with full fears flapping. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job. And it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. But there's nothing he's afraid of. Got the stuff a cowboy's made of. True blue private buckaroo. Betty Davis and uh, Edgar Bergen, who brought Charlie McCarthy, of course, with him, uh... People, I, it, it was just mind-boggling. You couldn't believe the people that walked through the door. Barry Road, now a KNX newscaster, was the booth announcer for the highly successful Bob Crane show, long before the late radio star turned into TV's Colonel Hogan. You called up to make an appointment, literally, to get on Bob Crane's show. That's how big he was. Mr. Chapman, of course, is our fine engineer sitting in the control room there. And, Jack, you know what 18 minutes after 8 on the KNX clock means? <laughs> It's time for a square dance. That's right. A very square dance. All right. Bob lived out in the valley and was always late coming to work. And uh, the theme started, and we played a couple of records, and all of a sudden in walked Bob, carrying his shoes, shirt out, tie the straggle, and there was a CHP officer right behind him. And the guy had stopped him doing, I don't want to say how many miles an hour, coming in from the Ventura Freeway, the Hollywood Freeway. And he recognized Bob. And Bob said, look, friend, I'm in a hurry. I've got to do a show, and uh, I know I've got a ticket coming. But would you do me a favor? Would you come into the studio and write it for me on the air? Well, Bob was such a big personality that the guy said, why, sure. And that's exactly what he did. You know how live radio is. They'll invite just about anyone into that studio with them. We always have better lighting when the Channel 2 crew comes Yes, over we have Two on the much. Town with us this morning. It's kind of fun because we have with us the co-host of Two on the Town with Melody, Bob Chandler. That's Jackie Olden and her sidekick Mel Baldwin of KNX's number one food news hour. 
they were going to bury him in the time capsule out front, but he wouldn't go. <laughs> well, back about, I think it was 1960, we all got together and co contributed through writing and various things, our predictions that had to do with population, transportation. Yes. All that stuff was buried out here in front, and I think there's a plaque <laughs> out by what used to be the main entrance years ago, and at, at the year 2000, they're going to pop that open and just see how close we were. And it should be interesting. For radio, times have certainly changed. But one thing that hasn't is the key to success, having a good relationship with your listeners. I have the most wonderful listening audience. They, um, they're like part of our family. I get pictures of their children. I get pictures of their grandkids. They send my grandchildren presents. I, I just feed off of it because there's just so much love. Bring back any memories? It's so different. For instance, where are the people? Where are my refrigerators? Where are the children? Art Linkletter was on the air five days a week, 52 weeks a year for 26 years. He believed the reason for its success was not the script, but the people he invited to house party. I'm down in the audience chatting with a very unusual guest today. I would walk up to a lady with a big fat purse and I'd say, you know, the way that purse looks inside reflects on how you keep your house. So let's see what your house looks like. I asked a little boy about nine if he'd ever heard of the Great Depression. And this little boy looked up at me and he said, wasn't that the time, instead of people becoming millionaires, millionaires became people? Is there something that you're most proud of? I'm proud of the, the thing I did with families. It was a clean show. It was a all-family show. And uh, I, I, I didn't mean to bring this along, but coming through an airport the other day, a man stopped me and handed me a little card. And I'll just read what this card is from somebody in uh, Sacramento. He said, you have had a profound and beautiful impact on my generation. Seeing you reminds me of a wonderful childhood filled with fun and values. On behalf of my parents and myself, many thanks. And that says everything about what I think of, of my life. Thank you, Art, for the heritage you left us. You were right. People do say the darndest things. The painting is by Goya. The settee is by Majorelle. The lamp is by Tiffany. And the gourmet cat food is by Fancy Feast. In the single serving can, you can see just by looking how moist and delicious it is. How much your cat will love it. Fancy Feast. Good taste is easy to recognize. Now in three new varieties. Every new diet that comes out, there's always hope. Maybe this one will work. Or this time I'm really going to do it. This time I'm really going to do it. And it doesn't work. It's not your fault. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. It hurts. You're not alone. The Rader Institute, AMI. 1-800-255-1818. I'd like a chance to defend my methods. My methods are this simple. Now I have everyone's attention, even yours, Mr. Avery. That's how I teach. I'm going to do whatever I can to help beat you. I wonder if you'd say that if you didn't have those curly blue eyes. <laughs> it's a new beginning. Knott's Landing, Wednesday at 3 on Channel 2. The Jet Away Weekend. Now you can have special weekend fares so low you can't afford to stay home. Take that fun trip to Northern California for only $39 each way. That's right, just $39. And you still get all the extras that set AirCal apart, including wine and champagne service. Reduced fares apply noon Saturday through noon Sunday to all Northern California airports. The Jet Away Weekend. AirCal. We make flying easy. The year 1949. The stars, television's Ed Wynn and radio's Howard Duff, alias Sam Spade. The playful but telling showdown, radio versus the newcomer, television. Sam Spade, I'm a private investigator. License number, uh, uh, 
That's funny. I can always remember it on Sunday. In the meantime, in this caper, I am uh, Sam Spade, yes. private eye, the greatest private eye of them all. I see. The uh, first rumble on this gory mess came from a sinister Bulgarian, Major Michael Meshikov. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is you're reading from the script. Yes, but uh, you how can't you read can that. do that. <laughs> but you can read it. But I'm a radio detective. Yes, then you better well, stop ad living. <laughs> All right, Meshikoff, I know you have the Rosenberg diamonds, and you'll talk her. Oh, no, you don't, Major. Drop that gun. <laughs> you carry your own sound man on radio? In television, we shoot ourselves and we use real bullets. Oh, that's a pretty tough racket you're in. Tough? You have no idea. It's awful tough trying to get actors to die for twelve dollars, you know. Of course, the pay scales did increase as television grew more popular. Channel Two began operating out of a studio at 1313 Vine Street. Now, KNX, the bastion of radio, held off television taping at Columbia Square until the early 60s. By then, it was clear television was the wave of the future. KNXT, as in TV, moved in and began broadcasting from Columbia Square. If you have a nagging suspicion that there's something familiar about our latest civic crisis, you're right. Once again, we are told that Los Angeles desperately needs a really efficient rapid transit system. Television again, fared far better than the rapid transit plan. And one of Columbia Square's biggest successes was the big news. From man's new frontier, the limitless reaches of space. From the world we live in, from the United States of America, from Los Angeles comes the story of today, the big news. It was number one for nearly a decade. Good evening, Jerry Dunphy, and tonight's big news in color. KNXT was the first hour-long news, and it featured the first female TV reporter here, Ruth Ashton. I can remember one time it was raining, and the director we had that particular evening, who had his own little sense of humor or feeling for visuals, decided that in order to uh, transmit this idea of rain outside, you didn't have any cameras outside, Tom Harmon and I would walk in with an umbrella that was dripping. So as we came onto the set, one of the stagehands threw a bucket of water on our umbrella, and we walked in with a dripping umbrella. In a sense, I'd say it was kind of casual <laughs> for the most part. With the 70s came the more portable minicam and the capacity to bring home the fear and horror of the SLA shootout. KNXT broadcast it live. All right, so that they're concentrating the fire from these two corners onto that white house with the two windows that we can see there? Right, as far as I can determine, and you've got as close as I have. Look out there. That's bad. That's bad. Get back, guys. We just took a uh, we just took a ricochet or a direct yeah, no, on that was a uh, we just got missed by a bullet. Oh, I don't. It that's went the through the house right beside us here. Oh, We're getting gassed gas. again. Maybe oh, we better move. Better move back a little bit. <laughs> Stay low, Rich. Oh, that gas is incredible. Uh, sure makes you want to get to some fresh air pretty quickly. In 1977, President Carter held his town meeting here at Columbia Square. Now, ladies and gentlemen. The President of the United States. And last year, our call letters were changed to KCBS. Television is gradually taking up more and more space at Columbia Square. What was the old radio studio A is now the KCBS newsroom. Up until about a year ago, you could still see the radio audience balconies amidst the television news library. Otherwise, it might be hard to recognize, but the stars radio spawned here aren't. We surprised our busy newsroom with a visit from the man who used to give away refrigerators from here. This is the newsroom. This was the studio. Yeah. They've taken the whole thing out and put all these loafers in. People doing things like How this. How are you? <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> Busy, huh? Yeah. yeah. So this is the this place. Is it. Changed yeah. a lot. Huh? Changed. Took the whole heart out of the studio audience. 
However, they, they look like they'd be a good audience. I think they are a good audience. Now, this fellow here is not interested in winning a refrigerator, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Art ran into Bob Creeley, a technician who worked on his show in the 50s. And we found out director Henry Weiss had been on House Party as a child. Were you on my program when yes, you were little? I was. I was, I was uh, six years old when I was on your show. Can you remember anything you said? Uh, yes. You asked me at the time if I had a girlfriend. And I said, yes, I did. And you wanted to know, what did she look like? And I said, she had brown eyes and blue hair. <laughs> and you remember this out of your whole life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't say the darndest things. That's great. It just goes to show you. You can remove the walls, but not the memories. H. Werner Buck Enterprises presents the 21st Annual Anaheim Sports Vacation and RV Show. Three giant shows in one. Over 600 displays. Thrill to exciting sports activities. Book your dream vacation from hundreds of outdoor adventures. Over $15 million in RVs. Stage shows, fishing clinics, travel film festival. It's the nation's number one show for outdoor recreation. All the adventure of the great outdoors. Anaheim Convention Center. Now through Sunday, January 12th. Hey, if you've been embarrassed because the paint job on your car looks so crummy, you don't have to hide anymore. Thanks to One Day Paint and Body, all you have to do is get any paper bag, cut out the eyes, and bring it in for $20 to $60 off the price of any paint job. Believe me, it's worth it. If your car has a crummy, faded paint job, bring your bag to One Day Paint and Body, and you'll get $20 to $60 off. You won't have to hide anymore. All I said was, if you don't love it, you don't pay. Numero uno really took my advice. But now, now they're going too far. Look at this outrageous offer. You inspired it, Joe. Numero uno's fabulous feast for two. Two generous helpings of spaghetti, two crisp dinner salads, garlic bread, plus a numero uno cheese pizza, all for just $6.95. And remember, if you don't love it, you don't pay. Wasn't that my line? I know I need help for my drinking, but those month-long programs didn't work. Chic is different. Oh, no, they're all the same. Chic takes just 10 days with a couple of two-day follow-ups. Well, what can they do in 10 days? Help you lose the cravings. Well, how do they do that? It's not talk. It's a special medical technique. You know what they did for me. Yeah. And they have a number one success rate. Okay, it's Chic for me. Chic now treats cocaine addiction. For a confidential interview, call now. FM radio station KKHR is one of the newest members of the Columbia Square family. Their appeal is to the young, partying audience. Well, what kind of shoe are you wearing when your toe is in the picture? Uh, I'm so serious. There's a high heel, a tennis shoe, no shoes, sun shoes, high shoes. Why? It's important. This jockey Slim keeps her appearance a mystery. So phone calls about her feet are about as wild as it gets around here these days. KKHR. <laughs> But during the 60s, when Columbia Records recorded here, it was an altogether different story. Original plans called for this building to be built like a machine for living. But only Columbia Records took that literally. They set up cots and brought in food so backup singers and musicians could stay here round the clock. All types of artists have recorded here, from Andy Williams to Janis Joplin. Now, KKHR DJ Todd Parker has gathered some stories that have become legends since they left. The cliche is if these walls could talk, but if they could, they'd probably shed some light on a lot of rumors or hearsay that's been going around in the building for a long time. As a matter of fact, we understand that Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, one of the foremost musicians of his time, was not allowed into the building because nobody left his name at the gate and the people at CBS didn't know who he was. He just looked like some freak, some menace to society. So he wasn't allowed in the front door and he went around to different doors pounding and yelling and trying to get into the building for the recording session until finally somebody opened the door, realized who he was, and let him get to work. Nowadays, when you hear an echo of any kind on a recording, it's done electronically. But there's actually a studio echo chamber in this building that Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys just loved. I mean, the whole Beach Boys group just loved the good vibrations from Columbia Square. Good, 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 good 
Rumor also has it that Barbara Streisand recorded in this building, two of her first early albums before her hit Stony End, back when she was just a skinny Jewish kid from New York City. Oh, the memories. Do you know what I mean? Like the corners of my mind. John Schubeck, Jess Marlowe, Tricia Toyota, and Colleen Williams might be surprised to find out that one of the biggest hits of the decade, Bridge Over Troubled Water, was recorded in what's now the newsroom. The comedy group Firesign Theater recorded a lot of their early albums here because they liked the feel of the old-time radio atmosphere at Columbia Square. In fact, in this later album, you can see Dr. Happy Harry Cox holding an old-fashioned CBS microphone. I wonder if we're missing any of these. Everything you know is wrong. There's a story that when one of the big teen idol groups of the 60s, Chad and Jeremy, recorded here, word leaked, and Gower Street was mobbed with thousands of screaming teenage girls. It was like a personal appearance by Bob Chandler. Amazing. <laughs> Hardly. But when Columbia Records left to find a larger home in Century City, at least it made it a lot easier to get in and out of the parking lot. But they left KKHR plenty to live up to. Fun. You know who's got all the fun in Mexico? The people on a seven-day Tropical cruise. This carnival fun ship has everything, like eight meals a day, different entertainment every night, and it goes to three fun Mexican ports. Save $200 per person on a seven-day cruise from Los Angeles to the Mexican Riviera on the fun ship Tropical. There's nothing in the world that holds greater promise than a young life. And nothing quite as sad as seeing that life somehow go terribly wrong. If your child has a problem with alcohol or drugs, call the Adolescent Care Unit when you've done everything you can. Care Unit. Nobody cares the way we do. I love a rainy day, if I'm inside and warm and dry and comfortable. That phrase, saving for a rainy day, has real meaning. Maybe that's why so many people put their savings in Glendale Federal. Safe, secure, federally insured. Of course, there's going to be that rainy day, but if you're with Glendale Federal, you can relax and enjoy it. Out of the ice age of white sails that leave you cold comes a bold new concept. Stroud's Linen Warehouse, with a half-price sail so hot, it melts the competition. Why settle for an occasional white sail with its typical limited selection and service when you've got Stroud's? 21 linen warehouses stacked floor to ceiling, now with even bigger savings. Everything for your bed, bath and tabletop, famous name brands, even designer labels. Stroud's, the best money can buy for a lot less money. CBS brought out the block here at Sunset and Gower in the 70s, and this building became part of Columbia Square. There used to be a bank on the corner, and where the two on the town offices are, there used to be a restaurant. Now, if you think about that, there are certain parallels. Some of our stories seem like just an appetizer, others like an eight-course masterpiece. We're best known for our home cooking, but we do specialize in an international cuisine. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed what we have been serving you for the past eight years. And the best part of it all, it's on the house. But since I'm new to the show, I'm immune to all this. So bon appetit, I mean good night, from Columbia Square and from all those who are proud to call this place home. And say good night, George. Say good night, Frank. Say good night, Groucho. Say good night, Chico. Good night, Chico. Good night, everybody. Thank you and good night. Okay, so good night. Thanks very much. Good night and all our good highest night. thanks. Good night. Good night, good night folks. Good night. Say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, pleasant dreams. Good night. Good night, all. Good night, Good night, sweetheart. Wishing you a very warm good night. Good night and good luck. Good night, folks. So long until tomorrow. Remain as always. Obedient to yours. Thanks for listening. And here's Cheerio from Hollywood.
we can get you into a home loan fast. Call Home Savings. For millions of years, bugs have made a science of surviving. Black flag makes a science of killing them. These two ingredients give Black Flag Ant and Roach Killer its dual killing action. Black Flag seeks out and kills. Keeps on killing for weeks. The right ingredients together give Black Flag its dual killing action. Regular and pine scent. Whatever bugs you have, Black Flag makes a science of killing bugs. KCBS TV Music Festival, Monday, 7.30. It's said there's no place like home, and there's no place like our home, Columbia Square. This is where my life began. For our special guest Art Linkletter and so many other celebrities when they did radio here, Columbia Square was in her glory. See how many faces you can recognize. This was my home, and my real home was just the place I went to sleep. Now, this is the front of the studio. We didn't have walls like this. No, this is was no all longer open. the front of the studio. Oh, that's right. We used to have them line up yeah. to come in here. I can't even get out or in there. Or we sometimes, can't... of course, when there were very bad days, the ushers would have to go out and shanghai an audience. I doubt People that. People couldn't walk by. They were dragged in. Tonight, let us drag you in to some of the secrets of Columbia Square. Okay, Kay, don't be ridiculous. Well, you just met me. Hey, listen, a chowhound doesn't have to wait for dinner to be hungry, you know. <laughs> that gypsy I like, he may sound sad and blue. Where Gene Autry sang his songs is now where Bill Stout speaks his mind. And was where Janis Joplin, Barbara Streisand, the Beach Boys, Simon and Garfunkel, and many more recorded some of the biggest hits of the 60s. Now in the 80s, we do two on the town here, Channel 2 News, KNX News Radio, and KKHRFM, and of course, many more shows. This is the courtyard now, but it used to be where people would line up to see all the shows and to see all the celebrities that have walked through those doors. But tonight, you don't have to wait in line to see our show. I'm Melody Rogers. And I'm Bob Chandler. Welcome to Two on the Town from Columbia Square. In 1937, William Paley bought KNX and came to sunny Southern California to start an office on the West Coast for the Columbia Broadcasting System. The site chosen? Sunset and Gower. The type of architecture? Well, the most modern for the times, of course. The Swedish architect thought the Art Deco look would be perfect for a glamorous new radio studio. What was architectural art to some was the pit to others. Back in the 50s, another one of its nicknames, the bomb shelter. Maybe that's because it really was. The basement was designated an atomic shelter. And up until several years ago, this storage room held survival crackers and bottled water. Columbia Square was the first building in Los Angeles to be air conditioned the same system that keeps us cool today. The building was so far ahead of its time, most of its working parts are still going strong half a century later. We will keep you up to date on all the scores throughout the evening. Harry, that's sports. Thank you, Barry. You'll hear sports on K on X at 15 and 45 past the hour. A summary of the day's top stories when we continue here on the news station K and X. The CBS network has always been proud of its news coverage, and some say this is the fastest newsroom around. It's KNX News Radio, the first computerized broadcast newsroom in Southern California. 
but not all the achievements KNX has worked for can be put on a wall. In 1984, a pilot welfare fraud unit went into operation. Its purpose Gary Clark had polio at the age of 10. That didn't stop him from heading up KNX's Ventura County Bureau. I made a deal with the news director that if the assignment editors would go ahead and just treat me like any other reporter and not worry about what they were sending me, I'll fine. If I get an assignment that I in my own mind feel I can't do, I'll tell them. That's the only way I, I need to do that to be fair to the station so they can send somebody who can't. I haven't told them that yet. We doubt he ever will. I don't plan on it. About the only thing that did rattle Gary was the first time he realized just who he was working for. I kept thinking back when I was a little bitty boy, you know, and I listen, I said, I'm in the same building, you know, where, where they were broadcasting this when I was a little teeny tiny kid and I listened to that radio every night, you know. This telegram from Jack Benny was short, but sweet. Just three words. Congratulations, Jack. What was the third word? Collect. <laughs> 436 cans of pork and beans. 430. Rochester, how come we got so many cans of pork and beans? Don't you remember? Mr. Paley threw those in to clinch the deal. <laughs> and the fleeing this contract to Flukey. Flukey, get this in your head now. Yeah, but I was listening with full fears flapping. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job. And it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. But there's nothing he's afraid of. Got the stuff a cowboy's made of. True blue private for Betty Davis and uh, Edgar Bergen, who brought Charlie McCarthy, of course, with him. Uh, People, I, it, it was just mind-boggling. You couldn't believe the people that walked through the door. Barry Road, now a KNX newscaster, was the booth announcer for the highly successful Bob Crane show, long before the late radio star turned into TV's Colonel Hogan. You called up to make an appointment, literally, to get on Bob Crane's show. That's how big he was. Mr. Chapman, of course, is our fine engineer sitting in the control room there. And Jack, you know what 18 minutes after 8 on the KNX clock means? <laughs> It's time for a square dance. That's right. A very square dance. All right. Bob lived out in the valley and was always late coming to work. And uh, the theme started, and we played a couple of records, and all of a sudden in walked Bob, carrying his shoes, shirt out, tie the straggle, and there was a CHP officer right behind him. And the guy had stopped him doing, I don't want to say how many miles an hour, coming in from the Ventura Freeway, the Hollywood Freeway. And he recognized Bob. And Bob said, look, friend, I'm in a hurry. I've got to do a show, and uh, I know I've got a ticket coming. But would you do me a favor? Would you come into the studio and write it for me on the air? Well, Bob was such a big personality that the guy said, why, sure. And that's exactly what he did. You know how live radio is. They'll invite just about anyone into that studio with them. We always have better lighting when the Channel 2 crew comes Yes, over we have Two on the nice. Town with us this morning, and it's kind of fun because we have with us the co-host of Two on the Town with Melody, Bob Chandler. That's Jackie Olden and her sidekick Mel Baldwin of KNX's number one food news hour. They were going to bury him in the time cap flop front, but he wouldn't go. <laughs> well, back about, I think it was 1960, we all got together and co contributed through writing and various things, our predictions that had to do with population, transportation. Yes. All that stuff was buried out here in front, and I think there's a plaque <laughs> out by what used to be the main entrance years ago, and at the year 2000, they're going to pop that open and just see how close we were. And it should be interesting. For radio, times have certainly changed. But one thing that hasn't is the key to success, having a good relationship with your listeners. I have the most wonderful listening audience. They, um, they're like part of our family. I get pictures of their children. I get pictures of their grandkids. They send my grandchildren presents. I, I just feed off of it because there's just so much love. Bring back any memories? It's so different. For instance, where are the people? Where are my refrigerators? Where are the children? Art Linkletter was on the air five days a week, 52 weeks a year for 26 years. He believed the reason for its success was not the script, but the people he invited to house party. I'm down in the audience chatting with a very unusual guest today. I would walk up to a lady with a big fat purse and I'd say, you know, the way that purse looks inside reflects on how you keep your house. So let's see what your house looks like. I asked a little boy about nine if he'd ever heard of the Great Depression. 
And this little boy looked up at me and he said, wasn't that the time, instead of people becoming millionaires, millionaires became people? Is there something that you're most proud of? I'm proud of the, the thing I did with families. It was a clean show. It was a all-family show. And uh, I, I, I didn't mean to bring this along, but coming through an airport the other day, a man stopped me and handed me a little card. And I'll just read what this card is from somebody in uh, Sacramento. He said, you have had a profound and beautiful impact on my generation. Seeing you reminds me of a wonderful childhood filled with fun and values. On behalf of my parents and myself, many thanks. And that says everything about what I think of, of my life. Thank you, Art, for the heritage you left us. You were right. People do say the darndest things. Nothing is more heartbreaking than a missing child. But many missing children have been found, thanks to the efforts of Assemblyman Gray Davis. Davis helped bring together business and government to put pictures of missing children on shopping bags, billboards, and milk cartons. I'm very proud to have helped bring Justin home. Gray Davis, Democrat for Controller. Thanks for bringing me home to my mom. One man can make a difference. Gray Davis, Democrat for Controller. Creating the budget gourmet, man reaches the peak of genius. Still, he contemplates his next leap forward. No, no. And once again, aha, genius prevails. The budget gourmet slimline. Eight exquisite entrees, all under 300 calories and around $1.79. Mandarin chicken, sirloin of beef in herb sauce and more. New budget gourmet slimline. At around $1.79 and under 300 calories, one of man's lighter creations. What's your idea of fun? <laughs> Dropping in on friends? <laughs> Drop in on the best beach at Waikiki during Hilton's Hawaiian Summer. Aloha! Hawaiian Village, Ocean View Room, Avis Car, terrific price. Call your travel agent or 1-800-HILTONS. And what's your idea of fun? Golf. Golf? In Hawaii. Golf. Turtle Bay Hilton, Ocean View Room, Avis Car, terrific price. It's Hilton's Hawaiian Summer. Call your travel agent or 1-800-HILTONS. Every year, I say I'm going to get ready for summer early. And you never do. And I never do. This year, go to the Broadway's Memorial Day sale. It's on through Monday. This year, I think I'll go to the Broadway's Memorial Day sale. It's on through Monday. They've got great sale prices in every department. They've got great sale prices in every department. And now, you can use Visa and MasterCard at the Broadway, too. And I can use Visa and MasterCard at the Broadway, too. <laughs> Honey, mm -hmm. I just had a great idea. Did you? The year 1949. The stars, television's Ed Wynn and radio's Howard Duff, alias Sam Spade. The playful but telling showdown, radio versus the newcomer, television. Sam Spade, I'm a private investigator. License number, uh, uh... That's funny, I can always remember it on Sunday. In the meantime, in this caper, I am, uh, Sam Spade, yes. private eye, the greatest private eye of them all. I see. The uh, first rumble on this gory mess came from the sinister Bulgarian, Major Michael Meshikov. Uh, what I'm trying to say is you're reading from the script. Yes, uh, you how it you can't that. do that. <laughs> but you can read it. But I'm a radio detective. Yes, and you better well, stop ad living. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Meshikov, I know you have the Rosenberg diamonds, and you'll talk her. Oh, no, you don't, Major. Drop that gun. You carry your own sound man on radio? In television, we shoot ourselves and we use real bullets. Oh, that's a pretty tough racket you're in. Tough? You have no idea. It's awful tough trying to get actors to die for $12, you know. <laughs> of course, the pay scales did increase as television grew more popular. Channel 2 began operating out of a studio at 1313 Vine Street. Now, KNX, the bastion of radio, held off television taping at Columbia Square until the early 60s. By then it was clear, television was the wave of the future. KNXT, as in TV, moved in and began broadcasting from Columbia Square. 
If you have a nagging suspicion that there's something familiar about our latest civic crisis, you're right. Once again, we are told that Los Angeles desperately needs a really efficient rapid transit system. Television again, fared far better than the rapid transit plan. And one of Columbia Square's biggest successes was the big news. From man's new frontier, the limitless reaches of space. From the world we live in, from the United States of America, from Los Angeles, comes the story of today, the big news. It was number one for nearly a decade. Good evening, Jerry Dunphy, and tonight's big news in color. KNXT was the first hour-long news, and it featured the first female TV reporter here, Ruth Ashton. I can remember one time it was raining, and the director we had that particular evening, who had his own little sense of humor or feeling for visuals, decided that in order to uh, transmit this idea of rain outside, we didn't have any cameras outside, Tom Harmon and I would walk in with an umbrella that was dripping. So as we came onto the set, one of the stagehands threw a bucket of water on our umbrella, and we walked in with a dripping umbrella. In a sense, I'd say it was kind of casual <laughs> for the most part. With the 70s came the more portable minicam and the capacity to bring home the fear and horror of the SLA shootout. KNXT broadcast it live. All right, so that they're concentrating the fire from these two corners onto that white house with the two windows that we can see there? Right, as far as I can determine, and you've got as close as I have. Look out there. That's bad. That's bad. Get back, guys. We just took a uh, we just took a ricochet or a direct. Yeah, no, which. That was a uh, we just got missed by a bullet. Oh, I don't. It that's went through the house the right beside us here. Oh, We're getting gassed gas. again. Maybe oh, we better move. Better move back a little bit. <laughs> Stay low, Rich. Oh, that gas is incredible. Uh, sure makes you want to get to some fresh air pretty quickly. In 1977, President Carter held his town meeting here at Columbia Square. And now, ladies and gentlemen the President of the United States. And last year, our call letters were changed to KCBS. Television is gradually taking up more and more space at Columbia Square. What was the old radio studio A is now the KCBS newsroom. Up until about a year ago, you could still see the radio audience balconies amidst the television news library. Otherwise, it might be hard to recognize, but the stars radio spawned here aren't. We surprised our busy newsroom with a visit from the man who used to give away refrigerators from here. This is the newsroom. This was the studio. Yeah. They've taken the whole thing out and put all these loafers in. People doing things like this. How are you? <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> Busy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the this place. This is it. Changed yeah. a lot. Huh? Changed. Took the whole heart out of the studio audience. However, they, they look like they'd be a good audience. I think they are a good audience. Now, this fellow here is not interested in winning a refrigerator, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Art ran into Bob Creeley, a technician who worked on his show in the 50s, and we found out director Henry Weiss had been on House Party as a child. Were you on my program when you were little? I was. I was uh, six years old when I was on your show. Can you remember anything you said? Uh, yes. You asked me at the time if I had a girlfriend, and I said, yes, I did. And you wanted to know, what did she look like? And I said, she had brown eyes and blue hair. <laughs> And you remember this out of your whole life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kids say the darndest things. That's great. It just goes to show you, you can remove the walls, but not the memories. Wherever you are, when thought comes to mind, there's Canon Type Star. Whenever you need a professional touch that makes it easy to correct mistakes, there's Canon Type Star. Though powered by little more than your mind, it can even edit and retype from memory. Yet the TypeStar electronic typewriter is small, lightweight, and whisper quiet. So whether you are here, there, or anywhere in between, go with the star. TypeStar from Canon. 
When I was a little girl, we lived near the Mother's Cookies Bakery, and every morning I'd wake up to the wonderful smell of freshly baked cookies. Sometimes I just had to sneak downstairs to get some. Do your mommy ever see you? Uh-huh. She'd say, Sarah, can't you wait? And I'd say, sorry, Mom, I can't. I know what you mean. At Mother's, we've been baking unforgettable cookies for three generations. Remember, mothers are like no others. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Manor Carpets, the quality carpet leader, is having their once-a-year Memorial Day half-price sale. Save on this DuPont Antron nylon cut and loop with 10-year wear warranty now half-price, only $9.99 a square yard. Or this luxurious Saxony with lifetime static control guarantee, now half-price, only $12.99 a square yard. Manor Carpets, once-a-year Memorial Day half-price sale ends Monday, 5 p.m. For the store nearest you, call 213 Carpets. Remember, you can't buy better than Banner. Honda, Toyota, Nissan. Make way for Colt. Coming straight from Mitsubishi Motor Corporation to Import Headquarters. Your Southern California Chrysler Plymouth dealers. He's got Colt Premier, hundreds less than Toyota Corolla LE. Colt Vista, with more interior room than the Honda Civic Wagon. And high-performance Conquest, thousands less than Nissan 300ZX. Take immediate delivery from 2,000 Colts in stock now at Import Headquarters. Your Southern California Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Buy one today. FM radio station KKHR is one of the newest members of the Columbia Square family. Their appeal is to the young, partying audience. Well, what kind of shoe are you wearing when your toe is in the picture? Uh, I'm serious. Is a high heel, a tennis shoe, no shoes, sun shoes, high shoes. Why? It's important. This jockey Slim keeps her appearance a mystery. So phone calls about her feet are about as wild as it gets around here these days. KKHR. But during the 60s, when Columbia Records recorded here, it was an altogether different story. Original plans called for this building to be built like a machine for living. But only Columbia Records took that literally. They set up cots and brought in food so backup singers and musicians could stay here round the clock. All types of artists have recorded here, from Andy Williams to Janis Joplin. Now, KKHR DJ Todd Parker has gathered some stories that have become legends since they left. The cliché is if these walls could talk, but if they could, they'd probably shed some light on a lot of rumors or hearsay that's been going around in the building for a long time. As a matter of fact, we understand that Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, one of the foremost musicians of his time, was not allowed into the building because nobody left his name at the gate, and the people at CBS didn't know who he was. He just looked like some freak, some menace to society. So he wasn't allowed in the front door, and he went around to different doors pounding and yelling and trying to get into the building for the recording session until finally somebody opened the door, realized who he was, and let him get to work. Nowadays, when you hear an echo of any kind on a recording, it's done electronically. But there's actually a studio echo chamber in this building that Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys just loved. I mean, the whole Beach Boys group just loved the good vibration from Columbia Square. Good, good, good Rumor also has it that Barbara Streisand recorded in this building, two of her first early albums before her hit Stony End, back when she was just a skinny Jewish kid from New York City. Oh, the memories. Do you know what I mean? Like the corners of my mind. John Schubeck, Jess Marlowe, Trisha Toyota, and Colleen Williams might be surprised to find out that one of the biggest hits of the decade, Bridge Over Troubled Water, was recorded in what's now the newsroom. The comedy group Firesign Theater recorded a lot of their early albums here because they liked the feel of the old-time radio atmosphere at Columbia Square. In fact, in this later album, you can see Dr. Happy Harry Cox holding an old-fashioned CBS microphone. I wonder if we're missing any of these. Everything you know is wrong. There's a story that when one of the big teen idol groups of the 60s, Chad and Jeremy, recorded here, word leaked, and Gower Street was mobbed with thousands of screaming teenage girls. It was like a personal appearance by Bob Chandler. Amazing. <laughs> Hardly. But when Columbia Records left to find a larger home in Century City, at least it made it a lot easier to get in and out of the parking lot. 
but they left KKHR plenty to live up to. Yes, I'm the loan officer, uh, Mr. Hi, I'm the manager here at Beneficial. The boss. $10,000? I don't think the bank will go that high, but... $10,000? Well, let's see what we can do. Beneficial no, has a variety No, I can't give you an answer. It has to go to our loan committee. I'd recommend a credit line account. You'll save money on interest, too. Wait and call me next Thursday. Hey, it looks good. I'll call you tomorrow. Beneficial. Talk to the manager, and you're talking to the boss. Nothing terribly complicated. Just great American cooking. Stuart Anderson's Restaurants. Smart shoppers are celebrating Jemco's giant Memorial Day sale. Pat yourself on the back, take a great big bow. You're a Jemco member, you're winning Yes, smart shoppers are rushing to Jemco for super savings on the latest fashions. Everything for the modern home and the great outdoors. Plus, the lowest overall supermarket prices. Celebrate the giant Memorial Day sale Sunday and Monday at Jemco, where everything you buy adds up to smart. $35 billion a year. That's what illegal aliens cost you annually. Here at the San Diego Mexican sector, over 800,000 illegal aliens will be arrested this year. Now we face new problems, drugs and terrorism. Terrorists threaten to export murder to America, and our borders are an open door. Unlike Alan Cranston, I'll work to increase our border patrol and for tough laws against drug smugglers. Mike Antonovich, Values, Vision. CBS bought out the block here at Sunset and Gower in the 70s, and this building became part of Columbia Square. There used to be a bank on the corner, and where the two on the town offices are, there used to be a restaurant. Now, if you think about that, there are certain parallels. Some of our stories seem like just an appetizer, others like an eight-course masterpiece. We're best known for our home cooking, but we do specialize in international cuisine. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed what we have been serving you for the past eight years. And the best part of it all, it's on the house. But since I'm new to the show, I'm immune to all this. So bon appetit, I mean good night, from Columbia Square and from all those who are proud to call this place home. And say good night, George. Say good night, Frank. Say good night, Groucho. Say good night, Chico. Good night, Chico. Good night, everybody. Thank you and good night. Okay, so good night. Thanks very much. Good night and all our highest thanks. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, pleasant Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Travel to a place where civilization ends and the Ice Age begins. Two in the Town takes you to the inside passage of Alaska, Tuesday at 7.30 on Channel 2. Thanks for listening, and here's Cheerio from Hollywood.